in cooperation with Service Electric Cable, is proud to present Scholastic Sports Action as the Red Tornadoes play host to the visiting Golden Bears of Mon Area, Mon Area High School in varsity wrestling action. As always, joining me in tonight's broadcast is my friend and fellow member of the MCA Wrestling Alumni, Mr. Ron Lentini. Ron, the Tornadoes are coming in tonight 14-1, and one, yep. defeating a Warrior Run last night. Their only loss coming to a 33-30 loss to Brandywine Heights from District 1 where they wrestled in the recent Canner Duels in Biglerville. Tough loss to a tough team, but besides that, they have no blemishes and they look very impressive as they move into the second part of the season. Well, the thing that's impressive, you know, high school wrestling has been down over the years. This year, Mark Carmel, they've been coming on the last couple of years, but the impressive thing this year is their depth. I mean, we lost quite a few kids. We had one person get hurt their back. The other kid got hurt with the wrestle match. You have Sean McCollum out with a bad shoulder right now. Malik's kid hurt his collarbone and then he picked up the flu, but through all of that, we wrestled. We had guys to fill the spots, and not just fill them. They were impressive with their wrestling. Guys like Dougie Craniac, uh, Kyle Higgins, Josh I mean, Hornberger, Josh stepped Hornberger in stepping up, and you know filling in, and, and the Zagarski boys down, you know filling in through there because we lost Frank Brosh. I mean the guys are just, and then you have other guys that are stepping it up as far as you have Haynes going all the way up against Bloomsburg and wrestling at heavyweight, you know giving up 30, 40 pounds, you know for the team. The yep. guys are really stepping up. They're doing a good job. No doubt about it. And the tornado's looking good. But, you know, this is the time of year when the smooth sailing begins to hit a little rough seas. You know, teams start to solidify. Guys are getting down to the weight classes. They want to go into postseason. So, you know, from now on to this point, and I say, you know, we're at the halfway point. From now, from this point to the end of the season, is it's going to be a real good test for the Tornadoes. Yeah, what you see now is the boys, I think you noted on the 15th of January, they pick up two extra pounds. So now instead of your weight class being a 103, it's a 105, 112 will be one. So you'll see guys will drop down from the higher weights because they could make that weight down there with those a couple extra pounds. And you'll see, like you said, things are going to solidify. You're going to find out where guys are at. Everybody positions themselves getting ready for the sectional district and region and, and not only that you know now you know you're coming down to the end of the season and you have the you know state dual meet tournament in which mount carmel more than definitely will qualify for and probably be one of the top seats in district four and you know you never know they might make a move towards uh, getting out of districts and be uh, getting the state competition yeah, from dual you, meet if you tournament. can make it out of district four you're doing pretty good because there is some good competition last year's champion line mountain will be there again I'm hearing some good things about Canton. The team Mark Carmel beat last night. Warrior Run is tough. You have Bloomsburg over there. They're tough, the experienced kids. And I mean, one or two, they, they could shuffle around one or two weights, but I think Mark Carmel's sitting pretty right now. They start getting their guys back that were hurt. They get a little more solid. I think we're gonna be sitting good. Yeah, and that you you hit it on the head, Ronnie. That depth is so important. And it's not only important on the mat, it's important in the wrestling room. I mean, oh, yeah. guys can push each other and you get a good workout with somebody and that only makes you better. It's not here that makes you good, it's in the wrestling room, as you know. You do a lot more wrestling in that wrestling room. You come out here, you get a six minute match and you're done. In that wrestling room, you're in there wrestling sometimes for an hour, hour and a half, and you can get a lot of good wrestling in there with some tough kids. Well, we hope the next hour and hour and a half is gonna be an enjoyable one. We're, we're happy to hear bring it here to you. Before the match starts, Ron, there is gonna be a little present James Haynes has hit the century mark at Mount Carmel, the sixth person to get that. Uh, he'll be getting an award in the middle of the mat. Who's the other, uh, who's our other six guys? The uh, other the guys are there, we got Dave Fantini, you have Mike Garcia, Dave Evans, Eric Lepotsky. Last year we had Josh Malik, he hit his 100th win. And right now we just got James Haynes picked up his, which is impressive on James because he didn't come here till his sophomore year. Yeah, no doubt about it. He had a few good years at Pottsville before coming over here, his dad moving into the Mount Carmel School District. And uh, we enjoyed having him. He was a, not only a great wrestler, he was a great football player. We uh, wish him well in all his endeavors. I know he'll probably be out for the track team doing wonderful things to them, to them uh, this spring. So uh, hats off to James Haynes. And, we will be back shortly with that presentation. So this is Greg Scavage from Ron Lentini. We'll be right back. The Mount Carmel Area School District would like to recognize the 100th career victory for senior James Haynes. <laughs> James becomes the sixth person in school history to accomplish this feat. James's 100th win came at the Canner Duels Team Tournament on January 4th of this year versus Mercer. James's career record now stands at an impressive 
107 and 16. Presenting James with a commemorative plaque and balloons are head coach Randy Ryler and James's father, Ernie Haynes. Congratulations to James and good luck to both him and the rest of the team on a successful season. A special thanks goes out to the Mount Carmel Area Wrestling Boosters who purchased both the plaque and the wounds. Once again, let's give a round of applause for James Haynes. A couple of quick announcements for the fans. The Mount Carmel Area Wrestling Boosters will honor all elementary wrestlers this Tuesday, the 22nd, versus Panther Valley. Senior night for the varsity will be held on Monday, February 4th versus Southern Columbia. And the first round of District 14 duels will be held Wednesday, January 30th at Mount Carmel versus an opponent to be determined. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mount Carmel area high school as we are setting up for the match tonight between the Mauna area Golden Bears and the Red Tornadoes of Mount Carmel area. Lineups are beginning Mount here, Mauna. You know, it's one of those that Mount Carmel should have this locked up, but you know, Mauna area has been scrappy for years. Always had a good program over there. Yeah, they always come through with a couple of nice wrestlers, so there should be some bouts here. You know, we're going to receive a couple of forfeits, but I'm sure you are going to see some very good bouts individually. Please give these students your positive You know, uh, tonight we'll be starting at uh, weight class 152, and I believe that's going to be Doug Craniac from Mount Carmel. You know, a kid that's a diamond in the rope himself there. He's really come a long way with wrestling. Oh, Doug's doing a real good job. Again, as you can see, the depth is quite apparent on the uh, the kids lining up, lining up across the map. That's impressive. That is very impressive when you got that many boys. Okay, so we're going to go through the lineup here for Mount Carmel at 152. We have Doug Craniac. And for Mahanoy, we had Sebastian Ros Rojas. And I think at 160, we have Mount Carmel's Randy Elliott will be receiving a forfeit. And at 171 for Mount Carmel, we are going to have Kyle Higgins or Josh Hornberger receiving a forfeit. Okay, and from Mount Carmel at 189, we're going to have Israel Boozer or Jordan Pelissa will be facing off against Mahanoy area's Ryan Herring. And at 215 for Mount Carmel, we have James Haynes. And you just saw got his plaque for his 100th win against Mahanoy's Dieter Holman. Holman's always been a wrestling name oh, for Mahanoy. Oh, that's a big Mahanoy. name over in Mahanoy area, absolutely. Okay, and then at heavyweight there for Mount Carmel, or I should say 285, is Chris Steck will be receiving a forfeit. At 103, Mount Carmel's Nick Dushenshine, who's having a great year as a freshman, will be squaring off against Mahanoy's Brett Andruskavich. And at 112 for Mount Carmel, we have Shane Wondoluski will be wrestling Mahanoy's Nathan Fagley. And at 119, another one of our standouts, Josh Malik. He will be receiving a forfeit. And that brings us up to 125. For Mount Carmel, we are going to have one of the Zagarski boys, either Matt or Rich, will be squaring off against Dylan Yetko. And that's a wrestling name for Mahoy. No doubt about that either. And at 130, we got Mount Carmel's Dylan Hornberger. We'll be wrestling Mahanoy's Casey Cunningham. Okay, and at 135 for Mount Carmel, we have Mike Sinopoli, and for Mahanoy area, we have Todd Tetchenstein. Okay, and at 140, we have Mount Carmel's Mike Maher, who'll be wrestling Tom Avanasso. Okay, and at 145 for Mount Carmel, we are either going to have Charles Frederick or Anthony Greco will be squaring off against Tom Seddon. Well, look forward to some great wrestling here tonight. I know we're going to be wrestling with some of these names up there. Yeah, now. then there's some tongue twisters in there. <laughs> that's, that's for sure, but uh, Mount Carmel, again, uh, 
you know, looking to go 15 and one tonight. I uh, see a nice crowd in the stands again, Ron, here. Uh, really, fans have been supporting the uh, team there, and we uh, hats off to them for coming out. That's right, and I, they'll appreciate it, because I'll tell you, there's nothing like wrestling, because like we said before, the, the team score is one thing. There's always individual bouts, so it's always competitive. Yeah, and one thing, and I was talking to Mike Kogut earlier, the AD, and for all the winter sports, for all the big basketball games we had this year and the uh, Knights of Columbus tournament and everything else, he told me the largest draw in the gym this year was the Mount Carmel Shemokin Wrestling. And that was the first match of the year. And uh, that was fabulous, and we're glad we broadcast that. But, uh, again, a great time. It was a great match. But uh, we look forward to a good match here tonight as we start 152, Ron, with Doug Craniac and Sebastian Ro Rojas. Rojas. Yeah, Doug started off tough. He come out, like I said, his sophomore year, second year out here wrestling, and he started off good. He, last couple of bouts out at the, the canners, he ran into some good bouts, good kids, but I think Doug has a good shot at getting out of sectionals. Yeah, and, and uh, take the top three there. Journeyman kid that's uh, come up through the ranks, uh, kept plugging, and has his chance now, and uh, so far he's been producing pretty well, as yeah, you said. He's a strong boy. He likes to likes to lean towards the cradle. If he could get that on you, he could pin just about anybody because he's strong enough to hold him there. Well, he quickly uh, snaps him down and spins around for a two-point takedown, an early lead in his first period, two to nothing. Doug Craniac over Sebastian Roes. And like I said, there goes Doug looking for that cradle. He has the cross face in there. He's trying to work it in, but. Nothing wrong with being cradle conscious. Wayne Chalice made a nice career out of it. I admit, saw a lot of guys that were killers with the cradle. They went a long way with it. No doubt about it, and there he is right now trying to run it, run that head to that knee, in control here. He's really strong, he's just trying to overpower a little bit too much here, maybe he should just break the guy a little flatter before he tries working at. Again, Doug Craney got two nothing over Sebastian Rojas of Monoy area. And he has the back leg bulldog there, he's riding it pretty tight. And he's trying to take the other arm through the crotch, maybe work a bar in there. Yeah, glad to see he's trying a few other things out That's there. That's it. Well, like, there you go. We ran him right over at the bar. Quickly tried to get a point, but I don't think the official said he was over it long enough. He will not be awarded a point. They're very close to the out of bounds. So the guy in the bottom, what he's doing is just working hand control. He's taking Doug's hand. He, Evidently, he's aware of what Doug likes to do, so he's taking that hand control, trying to block him from getting his hands locked. I'm looking at the clock, trying to figure out how much time left in the first period. They That's have an throw, awful lot of time. They throw me a curveball here. <laughs> I looked up and saw three minutes, 46 seconds to go in the first period. I said, I don't even think an Olympic competition, they have four-minute periods. I think Doug just looked up at the clock and thought, oh, my God, 346 left in the first period. I don't know if it can last. Wow, I, uh, I wasn't sure. That reminds me like of the old junior high days, you know, like yep. you had those one and a half minute periods, so they'd start the clock at three minutes and run, ring the buzzer at a minute 30. So yep. uh, definitely a little mistake made there. They're uh, trying to correct it right now with the official and the coaches. And... Okay, so let's see what we got. I don't... Uh, let's see what they're going to decide how much time's left in the first period. I guess they're still going to say three minutes and 46 yeah. seconds. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Doug is still up 2 nothing. It's still he, in control. It's He-Man night. Four-minute periods. See who can last. Greenick with a little uh, cross body right there. There goes the cradle. Yeah, he got it. Rocks him over. Far side cradle. Got the knee in there. And there he quickly, it is. All over. And he pins him before the buzzer. So I, Doug, we got to get this squared away. Well, if he got pinned before the buzzer, I'm going to say 159 in the first period. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to stick on that until somebody yep. else uh, tells me otherwise. But that makes the early team score Mount Carmel area six, Mona area mm, zero okay. as we move to 160. Well, yeah, and we're going to get a couple forfeits here. I believe at 60 and 71. This would be Randy Elliott for Mount Carmel. Randy Elliott again getting a forfeit. Randy's been looking good all year also. I'll tell you what, he's one of the guys that have been stepping it up for us when it, yep. with everybody else getting injured. That's you know, absolutely Here's right. another boy that's been stepping it up for us big time. Yep. This is Kyle. Kyle right? Higgins, one of the guys we mentioned yep. earlier stepping it up. You know, and I was down at the Canner Duels and watching, and you were right, Ronnie. Guys like Elliott in a couple matches, and we knocked off an undefeated Biglerville down there, which a lot of people down there weren't happy about, and he was one of the guys that picked it up for us. You're going to help me out here, Greg. This is Israel Boozer this wrestling is, for Mount Carmel. This is a new name to me. And we are, what, at 189? We're up to 189. And for uh, Mahanoy, we got Ryan Herring. 
Yeah. Israel Bozer, uh, you know, kid out, out for football for a couple years, a uh, good athlete, decided to come out for wrestling. We are uh, glad he's out. Uh, I'm glad he's out in the mat wrestling for Mount Carmel right now. But he early is uh, down 2 nothing as he gave up a takedown. Yeah, I guess you were saying Politza got his head banged yesterday at the wrestling match. He got a head, but it, yeah. I believe he got a couple stitches. So rather than risk it here, we're giving another guy a chance to get some experience and give Politza some rest. Hey, hats off, Israel Bozer. Glad you're in the uh, welcome to the Mount Carmel area wrestling alumni. Glad you're out there. Or as they say, is he there or isn't he there, huh? <laughs> Well, right now he's down there and he's got the double grapevine in there and he's working that power half. Who's he wrestling again, Ron? This is Ryan Herring. And All right. that, that is a tough move there. Herring trying to adjust it. He did. And he has Boozer in trouble. And unfortunately, Izzy will not be able to get off his back with 58 seconds to go in the first period. He will lose by fall to Ryan Herring of Monte Area, which will pot, well, which will make the team score now 18 to 6. Again, we had a couple forfeits there. Mount Carmel up 18 to 6 in team score. We're going to move to 215. Uh, 215. Well, we got James Haynes going against Dieter Holman. I know there used to be a Holman was a coach there for a couple of years when I was coaching. Yeah, yeah. Right now, uh, James Haynes taking the battle to him, looking to uh, add to his 100-plus win career here. And his headgear's unsnapped there. Yeah, it'll stop that. Tall, lanky kid for 215. You usually don't see two tall, lanky kids no. at 215. No, and again, as you said, we said earlier about getting down to, you know, weight. You know, James probably looking to be wrestling 189 when it comes to all said and done. I don't know. He's weighing, he's weighing kind of heavy here. I'm looking at the, yeah. the exact weights are on the thing. There's James working a cement job in there. He's bumping the head down. Reaching down below, try trying to lift him. it over. Splatel. Splatel him up. He's very close. Didn't get the splatel, but he's able to get around for two. No, he didn't get, okay, now he gave him the two. Good good job. Wait to now you work. Oh, there you go. There's a cross face cradle. Got it hooked That's in there nice that. and tight. Got to get that knee. Now you got, got the it. knee in the side. Very good. Oh, there you go. So Very you turn close. the hips up so the shoulders go flat. Very good, good job. Very good fundamental wrestling right there. And he kept on to that arm so he could work some more and try and get some more back points, which he step over here, he'll probably get it right there. He might even get a pin out of it. Very close. Very close. He definitely has three points. 52 seconds to go in this first period. James Haynes versus Dieter Holman. Uh, of the, area. the scorekeepers can't keep up with the points here that he's got. That's the second set of back points. So it should be 8 nothing. Okay. Not registered yet, but what is registered is that the 34 seconds to go in the first period. And there's some more points. Well, James, James working a nice tilt there. He got that bar arm. Well, he ran through to the, to the gut wrench and then just jumped to the other side and pulled him across. Very nice. Not going to pin too many guys with that. No, but it's, but it's one of those moves that can get you some points. Now quick. he's working the bar in there. He's let go of that, and he's got the bar. he got a one-on-one -on, -one on the other side, and he's trying to run that over. Wow, he's really working here. Nice bar, as you said, working it around, looking down. Should lift his head up to get that pin, though. Five seconds to go in the first period. Very close to getting a pin, but the first period will end with James Haynes leading by a score of 11 to 0 over they Dieter Holman. This, I don't know if they're going to catch this other set of back points, but it should be 14. <laughs> but yep. we aren't going to argue. We'll leave it at 11. I'm sure he's going to get three more points here somewhere. Uh, again, very close. Again, uh, getting a technical fall. 15 points being a technical fall. Uh, he's close to that right now. That'll be a five-point decision if he does get that. Although if he does pin his, uh, his opponent, he'll get six points. James will start on the bottom, looking to uh, do a roll there, it looks like. Little uh, Gramby series. Get out the back door. Wasn't done with the best technique, but uh, he, he got, got out. out. That's one thing about James. He's very athletic. I mean, he makes things work that shouldn't work, but he's athletic. He gets away with them. No doubt about it. And that will put him up 12 to 0 in this second period. Oh, nice period. ankle nice pick. Nice ankle pick. Making it 14 nothing. He will give up an escape to Holman, making it 14 to 1. Uh, my calculation is you need to take him down to get him, put him on his back in order to get that pin. Yeah, because, well, takes him down, the match is over. That's so like you said, he's got to take him right to his back to give him the opportunity to pin him. And that's it. That will be it. James Haynes will bin by technical fall, 16-1. Very, very workmanlike. Well, he worked the cradle, the gut wrench. He got a tilt. 
Worked the bar arm in there. I mean, he did a little bit of everything. Good technique, technical wrestling there. Heads off to him as he wins. That makes the score 23-6 now as we move into uh, 285, which I think is a forfeit. Yeah, that's Chris Steck from Mount Carmel receiving a forfeit. But we'll take a moment and talk about Chris Steck getting better every day, improving. And there's, and there's another guy that's filled in. That's showing the depth. We had uh, Erbanavich there who got hurt. I don't know if he's done for the entire season, but here you go, you had another guy stepping in. I mean, that's so important in wrestling because they, you are gonna have injuries, you're gonna have sicknesses. Absolutely, and you, don't wanna, you don't wanna give up those forfeit points. And here we go, 103 though. Yep, from Mount Carmel, we have Nick Dushenshine, and from uh, Mahanoy, we have Brett Andruscavage. Nick Dushenshine, Brett Andruscavage, 103 pound match. Yeah, Nick is doing a great job. He's been wrestling really tough for us. No doubt about Look, it. He's a freshman here, and he's really he'd come onto the scene, and he's looking sharp. Nice shot in there. He went for a dump, and then he just turned it right around. He worked right up to the single leg with a half. Very physical young man. Takes it right to him. Very confident. Doing a heck of a job for oh, the Oh, he's got it. He's sure. taking that arm up. Beautiful. Yep. Finishing that nice. Very close. Very close to a pin here with 1 minute 22 seconds to go in the first period. And he has the leg tied up there, preventing the guy from going belly down on him. He's doing a real nice job. And he got the cross face in there, nice lifting the chin. There it is. And he'll win, win by pin with one minute, 10 seconds to go in the first period. Very Nick impressive. Nick Dushenshine over Britt Anderscavich by virtue of fall, making the score 35 to 6. That will bring us into uh, our 112 match. And for Mount Karma, we got Shane Wandalusky. And from Mahanoy, we have Nathan Fagley. Nathan Fagley, Shane Wondolowski. There's another guy in there on that nice shot. Nice outside single is what he's doing, and they work it, cut it right off to the double. I nicknamed these guys a couple weeks ago to Killer Bees. You know, between Dushin, Shine, Wondolowski, and Malik, they buzz, yep. and they come right at you. But that's nice. That's like a high crotch series where they're going in there, and they, they just cut it right off to the cut double to right get that to penetration. If they, get the, if they can get the a fireman's off it, great. If the guy lifts up, you can change it right to a double. It's quite a nice little series. Yep, so he's got a tight waist, and he's got that one-on-one, -on -one trying to ride him, probably trying to work that into a bar. That's how we usually, yep, there it is. He tried, but... And he's maintaining the pressure on him nice. Yeah, and it seems like Fagley from Ajo, he's trying to do that sit-out turn and looking for the Peterson. He keeps reaching mm -hmm. back looking for that Peterson. So basically, Wondolowski's doing a good job by trying to bar that, which he's got it now. He's got the one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, he switched it up to a half. Peterson Rowe coming from the 1972 Olympics. The Peterson Brothers for America uh, brought the, uh, the move to light in international competition. And... We've called it the Peterson roll since. See that? I learned something every day. I never knew that. There you go. They wrestled the same time as Dan Gable did yeah, in the it. Olympic Games. That's probably why you don't hear much about them. No, well, that's <laughs> it. 47 seconds to go in the first period. Shane Wondolowski up two to zero. They go out of bounds. Back to the center. Again, we're in a 112-pound match. Mono area is Nate. Then Wondolowski. Shane Wondolowski. Shane Mount Carmel area is Shane Wondolowski versus Mono area is Nathan Fagley. Nathan Fagley. Yeah. We... Penalty okay. point awarded yeah, there. Got to get your foot up on that line or you get penalized. They usually give you a warning. Maybe he didn't. He didn't listen, so he nailed him with a point. That's technical violation. That gives his opponent, Nathan Fagley, one point, making it a 2-1 match here. And Wondolisky was trying to work a snap down there, but Mr. Fagley didn't want nothing to do with that. But Wando's been doing a nice job, too, as far as like we talk about working for the team. You have Wando and, and Malik bouncing around between 12 and 19. Wherever the tougher guys are, they're bouncing around, doing what they have to, where the coaches feel they're going to have the better chance to put the points on the board for the team, which is, that's nice to have. It. And then, again, when you had uh, Malik go out with the injury and the sickness, Shane did what he had to do. Absolutely. Just uh, one of those guys that are, are there when you need them. Oh, again, another nice, nice shot. Yeah, he went right in for that same thing, that high crotch, cut it off to a double. Beautiful. Head lifted up real nice, back nice and straight on that takedown. That was a, that was a classic double leg takedown. Beautiful. As, as the period ends with that takedown, makes it four to one. Shane Wondolowski over Nathan Fagley. Shane Second deferred his choice to Fagley. Fagley's taking top. That was... Interesting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Usually, but I guess he couldn't get out before. He must have something in mind there. Well, he figure, figures he wants to wrestle where he thinks uh -oh. he's the toughest. Oh, uh -oh. boy. That was a precarious position there for Shane as he hit the mat. 
He says he's okay, he's shaking it off. I, I think don't he twisted know. I, that ankle. Yeah. I would take a we're little. I'd take a minute here and run this off a little bit. Well, Walk it around. Make sure you're okay. You don't want to be out there on a bad wheel. Ab absolutely. You know. Yeah. Take see a what look. he he stood up and then he tried to do a forward roll with it and they got their legs tangled up. And it was not a good position no. when he came down on the mat. No. If you take a look at that, he's just one of those things like you see it in a football game. The way the tackle is and how the legs end up and you say, ooh, you know, it's one of those things that you looked at it and said, ooh. That wasn't where it's supposed to be. The yeah, we got a top-notch guy there, so you might as well let him look at it. We got Tom Swaldy out Tom. there, and he does a great job. So you might as well let him look at it, make sure it's nothing serious. Because, you know, when you're a kid and you're the heat of the battle here, oh, yeah, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't bother me. Then you can't get out of bed the next day. Absolutely. Tom Swaldy, star fitness, hats off to him. It does a heck of a job with our uh, yes, both does. male and female athletes. Great job. And uh, Shane has shaken it off. He's going back and down, getting set up. He's up 4-1. to yeah. one. And it's a 112-pound match. Yep. He back quickly, up. quickly gets up. He's run out of bounds by Nathan Fegley to go back to the center. Uh, the leg looks okay. He ran that back to the center. He looks good. Yeah, he gets a little general and fall and gets a little blood in it. I yep. don't think he, I don't think he's going to do that forward roll anymore. <laughs> Trying to face him, you have Fagley's trying to work a cradle. He does have it locked. Yep, I mean, he doesn't have good position on this. He I almost gave up. Switch that to a Peterson. Ugh. Comes out the back door. Oh, he has a cradle on Wondolowski. He looks like he's going to give up some points. That's why he Two took points. top. Absolutely, Ronnie. There you go. Way to work, though, here from Wando. Wando didn't even blink. Came he, you're right. Came right back at it, got the escape, tied it up, 5-5. Five to five. I don't know if that's right. It was 4-1 going into that period. He only got two back points. Gives him three. And now one escape. Unless you get him two sets of back points. But I didn't he see two he sets had, of back He had the points. same, he had the cradle on. That's wrong. But it's a Mono area coach. It's question. Yeah, that should be 5-3. Yeah, 5-3 us. Right. I don't know why the Mono area coach is over here. I would keep his mouth shut if I was him. That should be 5-3 us. Yeah, I'm not sure what the uh, the question is here. I only saw one set of back points. But apparently there was a, a mystery right. set of back points yeah, somewhere. because I don't know. Better known as the phantom set of back points. But with 109 to go in the Wando second period. again in on that nice shot. See if he can cut it off to the double. He might bow it here. Well, that's what Fagley's trying to do. But he's doing it nice by taking his leg to the outside. Yep. Good job. See, if he would have took that single with his leg between his legs, he could have could have hit that. But Absolutely. But regardless of the fact, Wondolowski comes up on top, gets a two-point takedown. They nearly out of bounds. They go out of bounds. Oh, now they corrected the score. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> Seven to three. Shane Wondolowski over Nathan Fegley. Now it's right. Wondolowski on top. And quickly he's on top, breaks the man down, circles behind them. There's Fegley. Is Fegley ben. trying to Peterson yep. roll himself, and he gets it. Did he give the two up? No, nope, nothing. No, nothing. Waved it off. Wait. Good call by the official. He's still working at it. He's got to, got to sit back on that. He's separating, though. That's what you have to do is separate the head. Keep that head on the mat. Oh. But he's still fighting it off, but I think he's going to get it. He does get the reversal. Oh, oh boy. Ooh. That was wild. Wow. That was tough, man. I didn't, I didn't know if that was two back points there, but he gave him two and two. So that makes it seven to seven. Again, Juan Fegley is awarded a two-point reversal the score is and now two right. point. No, it's seven seven is right. He's looking at nine over here. I don't know where he's getting nine from. We're trying to pick up the official talking here. Okay, they're calling both coaches over. There's a question whether this is 7 to we 7. We can straighten them out, Greg, if seven. they want. If they only want to listen to us. I mean, Ronnie, if people only listen to us, the world would be a better place. Yeah, Let yeah. me tell you that. Well, but wouldn't have all this confusion. Yeah. But we have a little moment in the uh, uh, break in the action here. I will uh, point out, because I, I see Kurt Everett over there, coach for the junior high team. They were victorious tonight, 72-21. Yep. But not only were they very victorious tonight, last Saturday had a big mark for the team. They won the Schuylkill League Junior High Tournament. And uh, we have a list of who won that there? Uh, Somewhere. Here it is. Here yeah. it is. 
Mount Carmel on, came on top over Blue Mountain. Yeah, Mount Carmel was first in the team standings with 225 points. The next team was Blue Mountain at second with 183, and Pine Grove came in third with 173. So good showing for Mount Carmel. I don't know how many teams they have in that Schuylkill League. Is it still around 19, 18, sure, 19? Sure, it has to be at least It's a very that impressive thing to win. Now, four Ooh, place champions. winners. Yeah, place winners for Mount Carmel. First place winners were Dominic Steller, Mike Sakaitis, Lucas Klingerman, Derek Urbanavich and Nick Gradi. Second place for Mount Carmel was Brett Prescott. Pre Prescott. Brett right. Prescott. Don't tell me how to say that. My brother's married to one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> and third place, we had Tyler Rorickey. Fourth place, we had Greg Lesso, Jake Haran, and Mitch Shields. Fifth place, we had Tom Steef, Cody Haup. And in sixth place, we had Alec Zito. And you say all those places because you, not only the champions win a team tournament, nope. you got to place all the places. You know, the top eight places in these kind of tournaments get team points. And goes all those guys to, contribute. It goes back to depth. Okay, so now they have this score at 7-7. It is finally right if they would have listened to us. Yes. And there's Shane out. So he's up by one with eight seconds left here. Eight to seven, as you said, Ronnie, the second period rapidly coming to an end. 112 pound match. Shane Wondolowski up by one All point right. over Nathan Fegley. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. Is he gonna take neutral or down? Shane, again, emphatically saying down. He wants to come out, get the escape. He's got to work that stand-up. Just watch been, out for that cradle, that's all. But he's been pretty good at the escape there so far. Yep. So if he comes off the bottom quick, and he does. Hand control. He's got to work hand oh. control. Almost got a locking hands there on top. Needs to come back up, though, Ronnie. Can't stay down there on his yep. knees. That's where he'll get in trouble. And this kid, there you go. Face him, face him. Watch for the bump. Yep. Good job. Good, good job. Good reaction. Great Kept reaction. his balance. He knew exactly. He watched him bump. He tried. He thought he had Shane off guard. They're off balance, and he tried to bump him, and it didn't work. Good job. So Shane Wondolowski up 9-7 now, getting that escape. Up by two points in this third period of this 112-pound match. Nice snap down by oh, Nathan no, no, Fegley. Shane, watch the hand. Take the hand control. Don't let him lock it. Because now it, he gave the two takedowns, so it's 9-9. Great match here in this 112 Very pound good. match. He's got to watch himself here. That doesn't give back points. Cross absolutely. body. Kid's working a cross body right in here. He's trying to get that arm back. Got to make some separation there. Separation, get that uh, get leg that down. Leg, get that leg out of there. I don't want to give up any back points here. Got to get his hips down on the mat. Get him separated from his hips and from Wando's hips. No, don't reach for that head. That'll get you in trouble. 55 seconds to go in this third period. Shane Wondolowski on bottom. Nathan Fegley on top. They're locked nine to nine. But again, Fegley in control, riding a nice cross body ride on Shane Wondolowski. Well, to me, you know, the official should have called the stalemate. The kid that wasn't working for any, he wasn't working to put him on his back. He was just riding him. Shane's got 30 Shane. seconds here. He's got to work more hand control. Reach for the head. Ooh, if he just would have reached for the head there. 27 seconds to go. He's got to lift his head off the mat. And he's got to come up to his feet. Right there. This wow. is where conditioning comes into play here. 20 seconds left. Very he's close. Almost. Don't Almost up. gave up. Good he's job. come up. Comes around. He's very close to getting an escape. Stay there. Just stay there. He'll give him one at the end. He Absolutely. has to give him He one. has the one out already. No, Shane. Just stay where you're at. Two seconds. He's not going to get the one. Oh, he never gave him the one. He was out. Well, where, I, they have 10 now, 10 9 Mount Carmel. It should be 9 9. You see what happened there, Ronnie? He was going to award the point, but the situation didn't end, and the guy was able to get back now around. He still had the legs. So still, if that match would have ended right then, he would award him the point, but he got. it was a continuous motion. He got back around them, and that makes it 9 to 9, not 10 to 9. Yeah, it's 9 9. So we're going to go to overtime, and they're going to start on their feet. That's good. The match was going a little too quick anyhow. Yes. <laughs> See, we knew. Even though the team score is getting out of control here, you get these good individual bouts. So we're in sudden death here. And Shane needs One to set this period, shot up. He took it. That's what got him in trouble at last period. He took a, a quick shot. He didn't set it up good enough. 
That's it. Now he's working a little better. Good. Set him up. Nice little inside step yep. there. But he didn't finish it, right? Yep. Yeah. Fagley saw that shot four times. So he's nice, nice front headed arm. He's got There's it the now. Fireman's. He's got it. Nice. Step over, step over. Just pop his Very arm close. through. Pop the arm through. Let go of the leg and pop the arm again. There cross, you go. Cross. That's two. 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 And with 26 seconds to go, Shane Wondolowski in sudden death. First takedown That wins. was nice. He took that shot. Fagley expected it, so blocked it. But he didn't quit on it. He stayed in there, kept digging, 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 and he ended up getting that dump. That was great. Great match. Both wrestlers. Shane Wondolowski comes up on top. And for Mount Carmel, we got Josh Malik here at 119, taking the forfeit. So that brings us to 125. And uh, let's see, one of the Zagarski boys are coming out here. I'm not sure which one. It's Matthew. Is that Matt? Yeah, it's Matt. Okay, Matt Zagarski for Mount Carmel will be wrestling Dylan Yetko for Mahanoy. Yetko. That's, like I said before, that's a wrestling name. That name's yep. been around a while for Mahanoy. Dylan Yepko, Mona area, Matt Zagarski, Mount Carmel area, Red Tornadoes. Nice Matt shot. Zagarski. Again, everybody's going in on that high crotch series. It must have went over that pretty good the last week. Gotta <laughs> lift his head though, but he's yeah. right in on it though early in this match. Yeah, he didn't cut it off to the double like Shane was doing. He's locked in on it. Battling early in this first period. Yeah, Yepko blocking in there in the crotch. That makes it hard to finish. Now he's, there you go. Just you know, hang on there and hope for the stalemate. Match one of those guys that record-wise, maybe not, it doesn't look like he's a big contributor, but he has been a big contributor. You know, just being on the mat, like you said, but a lot of times not giving up the six, not giving yeah. up the five, fighting, only giving up a decision. So, you know, one of those guys you give as much credit to as anybody That's else. That's right. You got it. Everybody contributed on this team, no matter what bout it is. But it just so, it seems like the way if we don't even have a weak spot, if we have kids that aren't as talented as the other boys, this is probably from about 125 up to about 140. And it seems like every team we wrestle, that's where their studs are. Yep. I mean, it just seems to be working this year. Yep. I mean, all of their studs are buried in there. These kids are not bad wrestlers. They're good wrestlers. They just keep running into the other team's studs. No doubt about it. 57 seconds to go. We're deadlocked. Nothing, nothing. Matt Zagarski, Dylan Yepko here in this 100 and... 25. 25 pound match, because they're still up on 112. <laughs> they're, they're driving me nuts here tonight uh, with the scoreboard. They're testing you. Boys are locked up here, collar ties back and forth, and now they got out of that. Feeling each other out here. Nobody's too sure what they want to do. That was a nice shot that he, that we had uh, Zagarski take right off the bat, but he doesn't seem to want to go back to that. Mount Carmel and Monte Area will be uh, competing in the Schuylkill League tournament this uh, this weekend, so I, I'm sure uh, Shane Wondolowski will be seeing Mr. Fegley again down oh, yeah. there. So, where, uh, where is that tournament at? I believe it's at Blue Mountain. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I was asking about that earlier. Nobody else seemed to really know. So nothing, nothing yet with 10 seconds to go. See if anybody can get a quick takedown here near the, uh, near the time limit of the first period. A quick shot by Yepko. Trying to finish it off, but Zagarski counters it well. Locks between the legs, counters the takedown. We'll move to the second period. It's zero to zero. Okay. And Matt Zagarski will take down. Yep. Yeah. It's usually what you do when you're tied or behind, you take the down position because they're a lot easier to score from the bottom than it is from the top, but not for everybody. As we saw in the last bout, I was surprised that Mr. Fagley took top. Absolutely. Well, you know, go where you're the best. Yeah. You know, where you're confident in doing. And I just see a little bit of a trend here with the legs from these Mahanoy boys. There's second, second match in a row where they're throwing that cross body right in. No back points yet, or nope, nope he did nope, not he count. Get, now he's trying to work a switch here. No, he couldn't get all the way scooted out there. Zagarski on the bottom. And yep, they like to run top. that cross face cradle. He's trying to run it. Gets it. Take that hand control. Don't let him lock it. There you go. Good job. And that's one of those things, Ronnie, you know, you know, like in football or basketball or any other sport, when you scout other teams, you look for team tendencies. And, you know, that's one thing, Monte area, cross yep. face cradles. Look for yep. them, guys, watch it. They're all going to run them. It's one thing that you go over in a room as a coach. Here, here it is again. He's looking for it again from a different position, but it's the same move. 
But you got to reach up, take that hand control, and then turn. You're out. Zagarski fighting him off so far. No points scored yet in this match. We cross under the minute mark again, 0-0. Yeah. Zero, zero. Zagarski go. sits out, turns in, comes to his feet. One point escape. Now don't rush anything here, Matt. Set it up. 1-0, Matt Zagarski over Dylan Yepko in this 125-pound clash of yeah. Skooka League wrestlers. There, good, good sprawl. Nice he sprawl. Was, you know, it wasn't a good shot. He was too far away, so that was an actually a very good job. Now he's got to spin so behind to try and get two. To take that underhook out and push on the head. Yep, keep him down. If his head's down, keep it down there. Absolutely. 19 seconds to go. Go near the out of bounds. No takedown yet. Uh, yep, goes very close. Yep, go will get it on the line. Tough one to give up there. Yeah, Ron. with eight seconds oh, left. That one hurts. As yeah. they say in golf, I hope that doesn't come back to haunt him. Yeah, well, hopefully he can get out here with eight seconds, score one to tie we, it back uh, up. We have some blood there as a... Uh, Coach Bucky McCullum out to uh, check things out before Coach Rendler. Yeah, so the boys will be getting ready now. I guess we have, uh, first you're gonna have the, the dual, the district yeah, dual well, tournament. First of all, we have the Schuylkill League tournament this week. Then they move into the district duels. And, and then, then right behind boom, that is Right behind the section. So uh, we're rapidly coming to a conclusion here. And like we said earlier, this is the time that uh, the waters will get a little rough. You better have your uh, yep. you sails up to, and uh, uh, your wheels tight. You get ready to battle. You can see with the boys the way they're wrestling. The intensity is a little more than what it was when our, you know, our first couple bouts. I mean, they still wrestled hard, but your intensity picks it up this time of year, and you have to. If you want to advance, you have to keep wrestling hard. Absolutely. Looking over the crowd tonight. Again, as I said before, good crowd. You got your regulars here and got a couple surprises here. I even see uh, Mr. Bernie Steller, yeah. um, co-principal at the high school, showed up for the match tonight. Glad to see him there. Phil Gergen, I see over there. Sports Information Director, and I think we have movie stars here tonight, Ron. Movie I think stars. Charlie's Angel showed up. <laughs> I see, I see, oh, that's Patty Revito, Carol Smith, and Christy Shalicki. I thought it was Charlie's <laughs> Angel showed up here tonight. Oh, I thought we you, had celebrities here. You are something they else. like three movie stars over there watching <laughs> the wrestling here. We got everything you want, good wrestling, good looking girls. We got it all here tonight. Oh, yeah, and the action. Five seconds to go in the second period. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get out. And two yeah, to one. As we go to see the frustration on Zagarski's face. He hated to give up that takedown. Eight seconds Well, left. like you said, Ron, he's been wrestling some tough kids. Yep. And all of a sudden you get a kid that is, is as good as you or maybe you're a little better than him. And you, you really want to go out and you really want to do it to him. And, you know, get a win underneath your belt and give out a little bit of the uh, doing good the here. Boots. He's got that arm tied up here. He's trying to work a stack. He's trying to post them up through the crotch there. It's not working, but now he's chopped that arm to a bar is what he was trying to work before, but he couldn't quite get the bar in there. Outstanding job so far <laughs> on top by Matt Zagarski. Is able to keep doing Yepko in control, but needs to get him over. He's down yeah, two to one here. He needs to get off them legs. He was, I'm looking at the official, kept looking. He had the legs tied up. They want you out to the side trying to work to turn the guy or they'll call you for stalling and really quick anymore. That's that's what it's all about. If you're gonna pin somebody, you have to get out in front. Well, he threw the legs in there. Let's see if he knows what he's doing with them. Well, he's gotta try to work there you them go. down. Working a power half, good job. Okay, Very let's see good. If he can crank him over. He has a half Nelson on there, gives it up. He went back. I thought he had the bar on his side. No, he's working a half on the other side now. That's, he's working tough. He's trying to turn him. One minute to go. He's got to crank up a little. Oh, he got stalling on the bottom guy. Yeah, he's working that power half. He just needs to crank up on that elbow a little bit more when he's running that. Yepko warned for stalling for Monte area, but he is up two to one with 46 seconds to go. Matt Zagarski needs to score a... Near fall here. If he keeps or, working that power half, he's going to get another stalling out of him, and that'll tie the score up. Either that or he's going to have to let him out and try to take him down. And there's only 30 seconds left in his bout here. He rode him out so far. Too bad they don't have riding time. It's a whole minute and a half. He rode him out. He's trying to tilt now, trying to tilt him yeah, over. But he's going to get him himself over. in trouble here. He's getting him out of position. That's what happens when you get frustrated. But he got his hips back up. Good job. 15 seconds to go. Matt well, Zagarski down by one point. I trying can't to run him it. over. I thought for sure he'd get him whacked with another stalling call. He keeps working. Coming up to his feet now, trying to get him down. 
Doesn't look like it's going to happen. out the whole last two minutes. Just That's, couldn't turn him. Zagorski going to lose a heartbreaker here. Two yeah. to one to Dylan Yepko. Dylan Hornberger wrestling Casey Cunningham for Mahoe. Dylan already in on a single, trying to trip him down to the mat, and he got him. There's his two. Casey Cunningham, Dylan Hornberger, Mount Carmel area. Here's a boy that's been wrestling for a freshman who's been putting on a very impressive season so far. He's looking good. Last night's match, he bounced up to 135 to wrestle a boy that finished second in the state last year just for the competition. Impressive. That's the things to do if you want to get better. Absolutely, and it's the things you have to do sometimes in a team situation. You have to, you have to move up. You have to move down. You have to sometimes, uh, you know, get the extra point or not give up a big loss. Those are things you do. And again, it's nice to have the depth on the team to be able to do that. Right now, the depth is all Dylan Hornberger as he is in charge of this match, two to zero. And Dylan Hornberger, Casey Cunningham on a area 130-pound match. One minute, 17 seconds to go. Dylan with the tight waist, trying to chop that forearm. He likes to work that tilt, too. Yep, here he comes. He's going to roll through. There you go. There he is. Keeps that arm real tight. Very nice. Keeps his hips nice to hip job. on that. Very Picked nice. Picked up three quick points. That makes it five to zero. Dylan Hornberger up. Now he's working a bar in there again on this side. Well, he's got that nice. You don't have the one-on-one -on, -one on the other side, though. You got to block on that other side if you're going to be able to turn him with that. Yeah, that's the only way you're going to do that. Right now, 44 seconds to go. Dylan Hornberger up five nothing. Working that two-on-one, looking to four gates and tilts, that, breaking them down to the mat. I thought he was going to work that tilt to the other side. He did it once to that side. I figured he was going to do it back to this side, but he just couldn't get it locked tight enough to do it. Trying to break him down. Trying to secure some more back points here in this first period. 20 seconds to go. Yeah, you can see the kids from Mahoney. What they do when they're on the bottom, they just work hand control. If they yeah. can keep your hands tied up, it's pretty hard to get turned if you keep tying the guy's hands up. But Dylan's doing a good job. He has the legs tied up here. I think he's got a cross face worked in there now that he's trying. No, he just has that cradle lock. And the period will end. That's the end of the first period. Four minutes to go in this match. Right now, Dylan Hornberger is so far victorious. He's winning 5-0 by virtue of a takedown and a three-point near fall. He will. I thought I saw him defer. I don't know if the Mahanoi guy took top. That'll be, that. That'll be I, the second time the yeah. Mahanoi guy took top. Yeah, especially when they're losing, they like them legs. There he goes with the legs. Two tendencies, cross-face cradle, and they like to throw that leg in there right off the bat. Oh, he pulls, oh, him, pulls nice. him on top of him, and Dylan's able to capitalize on that mistake by Casey Cunningham, and he has Mr. Cunningham in big trouble here. Good hips there. I mean, he came out of that, and he was a little bit out of position, but boy, he just stepped that right over with his hips and took control. He's awarded three more back points. It's up 10-0 to zero right now by virtue of a reversal and three-point near fall. That makes it 10-0. to zero. I know See, Dylan's trying to work that tilt again, but I, from what I've seen, I think he might be better off just put him back up on his feet. Dylan's pretty impressive on his feet. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. You know, you're up by this amount. Try some different things, you know. And he's got, some, a, uh, he's got a half going. and a one-on-one -on -one here. I don't know if he's going to be able to get out and run it. Nope. One minute, five seconds to go as we near the breaking of the one-minute mark in this second period. Dylan Hornberger all over Casey Cunningham of Monte area, 10 to zero. Team score right now, not really a factor. No. Mount Carmel way ahead, 44 to nine. And there's another tilt. We'll pick up three more back points here. And that will make it, did he award them? Oh, he only gave two back two. points. Two point near fall, that makes it 12 to zero. He's three points away from a technical fall here in the end of this match. Yeah, you still have 43 seconds left here in the second period. So if he turns him one more time and holds him there, it's going to be all over. Right now he's in control on top, trying that tilt again. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying to do the bar, but this kid's doing a nice job as far as blocking that bar. But Dylan's just working other things. If he doesn't get the bar, he's content to work something else. Yep. Need to do uh, that. Uh, don't get yourself in trouble here. There you, you go. He's going, going to lose to an feet. escape. You know, with that old rule in wrestling, give, give him one, one not, not two. two. Yep. Right? A one-point escape will never get you in trouble. A two-point reversal might get you on your back and get you in trouble. 
And with 12 seconds to go, Cunningham got in there on a deep single. I caught Dylan off guard there a little bit. Yeah, Dylan trying to counter here. <laughs> Four seconds to go, no points awarded yet. There it is. He's gonna give up two on the whistle. So credit to Casey Cunningham, battling yeah. back, not giving up here. Monteary kids wrestling tough here tonight. That makes the score 14 to three. And he'll choose the uh, uh, neutral. neutral position. And let's see how Dylan works here. He had a nice single leg last time. Now he's working a little better. There Quickly snaps him down, spins around, gets a quick two, and he gets his bearing back on. Yeah. Bearings on straight, and he's up 16 to three right now. One more tilt, and it'll be over. He's working in there. He's working hard on top. Actually, the boy from Mono, he's doing a nice job of blocking with the hand control and not letting him get that bar in there good and tight. But Dylan is persistent. He just keeps digging and digging and digging. He gets it eventually. Persistence, persistence, persistence. It's the three most important words in wrestling. Hmm. Yeah. Dylan's going to try and take him back down to the mat. One minute, 25 seconds to go in this final period in a 130-pound match. He's got, he's got, got the, the leg. Cradle. Yeah, the leg slipped out on him. But he uh, regrouped, careful, but he's going to give up a two-point reversal. Yeah, he got a little slow. He had the leg in there, and he went to take him back into what they used to call a spread eagle, but the leg slipped out, and then all he had was the leg holding it, and it's pretty hard to, to take any back points like that. Well, again, he was smart enough not to. He gave up the reversal, but didn't put himself in a situation where he'd give up any back points. And he quickly looks like well, he's going to he get has a reversal. That cradle, he has that cradle lock, but there we go. There he, is. he went into a headlock. Oh, off yeah, of Dylan it. has that tight, too. Oh, that's tight. It's 18-5 to five that's right now. He's nearly out of bounds, but he that's does it. slip out. Is that the bout? Yep, he gave him the three back. That would end the bout, a technical fall with 43 seconds to go in the third period. Dylan Hornberger will win by a score of 21 to five over Casey Cunningham, making the team score 49 to nine. And we will move into- 135. 135. Where we'll have Mount Carmel's Mike Sinopoli going against Mahanoy's Todd Tekentine. Wow. Tech and teen, they're saying. Tech right? and teen, tech and tine. I might be right, he might be wrong. Who Just knows? Just keep out the turpentine. How's that? <laughs> Mike Sinopoli, Todd, tech and tine. Yeah, they're locked in there, Sinopoli trying to snap them down. Here we are again. We can sit here and give the accolades to Mike Sinopoli, too. Yep. Guy that's been plugging away for us in the middleweight class. Well, he's been all over 35, 40, wherever they need him. They go, that whole crew, they've been doing a nice job. They weathered the storm in the middleweights till we could get to our killers up there in the heavyweights. Absolutely. Killer bees early and the, the hurricanes late. <laughs> nice job of getting the takedown in there by Sinopoli. Now he's They're working at tight, tight waist. waist. Yep. Good tight waist, trying to chop that arm. Now he's in there. Ooh, bear bear hug. Missed it. Just take him back. Oh, there, good job. Been. Stays in control, doesn't give up any points there. Still two to nothing early in this 135 pound weight class. One minute, 15 seconds to go. Yeah, Mike's a very strong boy. He just needs to polish up a little bit of his technique, but he is very strong. Yes, he He's is. He's only a sophomore, I believe, too. <coughs> we're believe still pretty I'm, young. I believe we only have three seniors on yeah, the, in this lineup. We're still pretty young. So again, a couple um, of freshmen. For those of you that might be just tuning in, we're here at Mount Carmel Area High School, where Mount Carmel Area High School varsity wrestling team playing host to the visiting Monoy Golden Bears. Mike was doing a good job of following the kid from Monroe. He was sitting out, turning in, sitting out, turning in, and Mike just kept following him. But at the edge of the mat here, he got a little lazy and got out. Gave up the point, but he's doing a great job of following him. Gave up that one point escape back in the neutral position. They're two to one right now. Mike Sinopoli winning. That's in this match. 35 seconds to go in the first period. Yep, they're jockeying in there for position. Inside control. Mike has it right now. Kid from Monterey, Tech and Tyne is blocking him. That's what you do. Yep, nice, nice. Nice, nice. Bear hug, nice. Bear hug by Mike Sinopoli right down. He set that up beautiful. A bad shot. He snapped the kid down. When he came up, he went right in. Very aggressive. That was nice. That makes it four to one now with seven seconds to go in the match, in the match, in the first period. Mike Sinopoli up 
four to one, and the period will end. And not only a good takedown, but a good time to get it right there at the end of the period. Hey, them takedowns and all these other moves work a lot better when you have nice setups like that. Yep. That's what it's all. The setups make the moves so much more efficient. Absolutely, absolutely, and it, it just it just makes you a better wrestler. You know, you have to set up the move. Yeah, it's easier. Instead of trying to bull your way in there, you just set it up. All right, there comes Mike to his feet. Nice. Hand control right out. Right out, making it five to one. But like, perfect point, Ronnie. I mean, it's better to shoot a takedown when somebody's walking into the hit, walking into you instead of walking away from you. Yep. I mean, it's just common sense. Oh, you're rushing that off right into that bear Boy, hug again. Nice, There's two. Nice, nice That's Mike two again. <laughs> nice job. Oh, he's confidence level. I see it coming up. Oh, now he's taking neutral. <laughs> Took him oh, down. Wow. He's going to put it, cut him up. One of those guys again that, you know, uh, I've been doing it for the team and, you know, lost some tough matches there and went against some tough competition, but he has a chance to dish it out now a little then instead of taking it. Again, he's trying to block that shot. Got a sprawl, Mike. Just stop the shot first. Giving ground, pushing yep. the head down. Very good. Yep. Yep. One minute, oh, 31 seconds. Porter be, Nelson. He'd be the perfect kid to work that. Just spin this way now. Push the head down and circle this way. Okay, folks, for all you nostalgia buffs <laughs> out there from the 60s and 70s and 80s, there's a quarter Nelson. We like to see somebody uh, use that. Man, I think he's trying to hit the pancake when yep. he comes up. And you can do nah. that off the quarter. Yeah, still love to show that. Maybe <laughs> we, ought to, we ought to start a movement right here tonight, Ronnie. Bring back the quarter Nelson. Yep, hey, it was a very effective move, especially when the kid takes a shot and they're out of position. Force that head down, work your arm through. Very efficient. One minute, five seconds to go in the second period. Mike Sinopoli up seven to two over Todd Teckentine from Mono area. Mike is trying to work the takedowns again. He was snapping them down, snapping them down. He just didn't leave go of the snap down. He had the leg. If he would have left go of that snap down and stepped, I think he could have got him. There it is. A little high. He's shooting that high double and then go right into the Oh, he's uh, going to get him on his back down. this time. He kept the arm. He kept the arm in case, which was real good. I can't see if he, oh, he didn't get the other arm. Oh. If he could get that arm, get his arm through there. There we go. Now he, he's got it. He had it originally and gave it up. Oh, he's got it now. That's a pretty deep half. Nine to two. A lot of time here. 28 seconds. Just need to keep the pressure on, lift his head, give a little ground, readjust himself. Oh, he's got that tight. There it is. There very it is. close. Very close to having a pin here. 15 seconds to go. Very close. Can't get it much tighter wow, than that. I don't know what they're looking at. <laughs> and that will do it. With seven seconds to go in the second period, Mike Sinopoli wins by virtue of fall. Very good match. Time. That's the most impressive I've seen him so far. He yep. looked good. Confidence Absolutely. looked up there. A couple of nice shots. He looked good. Absolutely. That will uh, pump the score up to 55-9, to nine and we'll move into uh, 140 here for Mount Carmel. We got Mike Maher. And for Mahanoy, we got Tom Abanosa. Tom Abanosa. Against Mike Maher. Again, we're in a 140 pound class. Mike Maher, Mount Carmel area. Tom Abanosa, Mahanoy area here. Yeah, Maher's been having a nice season pretty quietly here. He's been pulling out some big matches for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Another young kid that, uh, that has uh, great potential. We uh, look to see him, uh, you know, just getting better and better. Well, with being on a team like we have right now and all of these guys getting a little bit of experience, and I'm sure we're going to get into the district duels and pick up a couple extra matches there. That's great experience for these young guys. Coming yeah. back next year, instead of only getting like your 12 duel meets and they're getting so much more experience, it's great. Yeah, it was nice. Like I said, I was down to that, uh, the, the big reveal counter duels down there. What a great tournament. They had 16 teams, you know, battling in a team tournament, wrestling on four mats. It was just great. It was just great competition and great for the kids. There you have Maher's trying to work a, a snap down for a takedown. This, this guy, he's wrestling Avenosa here from Mahanoy. He just, just wants to stay low, compact, and wrestle a little bit well, upper he's, body. He's a little shorter than yep. Maher, so he's going to stay compact and make Maher try to get underneath him. Yep, and it's hard. It's hard to get in at those legs when you got a guy that's like built like this. 56 seconds to go, 140 pound match, no score. We have a stalemate, we're back to the center. Mike Maher, Todd Apanosa. Yep, Maher's trying to figure things out here. He's got in there, got tied up in a collar tie. He's trying to work a shot, but 
He just yeah. doesn't feel comfortable with getting in there. He just has to work snaps and get him to stand straight up. Mono in there on a nice shot, nice high crotch, but Maher blocking it well, attacking that back ankle. He's doing a good job. Keep that back ankle. He's doing a real good job. Abanosa in on a, changes it to a double, but caught, uh, countered well by Mike Maher. They'll go back to the center. No score, 24 seconds ago, 140 pound match. Stay tuned, we have this one and another one to go. Yeah, yet. one more after this. Mike's getting a little frustrated. He's trying to work a snap down, he can't move him. A little duck under there yeah, by Yeah, duck uh, under Abinosa. or throw by, I don't know what he, what he was trying bump. there, but Mike a little too quick, it was, didn't quite work. But nine seconds to go. Why watch yourself right here? You don't want to give up anything. Maybe yeah, try again, to steal one. Again, eight seconds left. Yep. Apodosa tries a little shot, blocked off, countered well by Maher. But when I see him in that position, I keep thinking Maher should just bump him a little bit, check his balance. He looks like he's a little off balance. You might get lucky. Yeah. No doubt about it. Snap, check, snap, yeah. check, move yeah. him. Maher's choice. He took bottom. Let's see if he can. Uh, well, I can't see this guy throwing legs in there. I can see him no. working the cradles, but I can't. He's a little no. too short little to throw the legs in there. No doubt. There's no the doubt. cradle, though. He's looking for the cradles. That's it, Mike. Tear it off. Tear it off. Push that head down. Stretch him out. Yep. Coaches are telling him heavy hip. Drop that hip down. Give yep. him all that weight on his shoulder. Give Just drop ground. that hip down. Give some ground. Give some ground. Give some ground. That's it. You don't want to go out of bounds there. You're in good position here. Give some ground. Give some ground. Look where you're at. Look where you're at. Get uh, out of bounds. Not going to get anything. <laughs> a lot of wrestling there for no points. A lot of wrestling being right on the line. It's like wrestling on that line is like trying to like uh, fight on a cliff. You yep. know, <laughs> can fall off into oblivion very quickly. One minute, Mike 18 trying seconds. Trying to do a stand up. Avanosa bulldog that back leg. There you go, pop your hips now, Mike. Pipe the hips out. There he called stalling on Mahnoy there. I figured that was only a matter of time. It's the second time Mike did the good stand-up. Are very close, but not out yet as we approach the one-minute mark here in the second period, and it's nothing, nothing. Todd Apinosa, Tom Apinosa, Mike there Maher. Are, he's out. And Mike <laughs> Maher is able to secure the one-point escape, making it one to zero. As they fight near the out of bounds, Maher shooting, Abanosa countering, they're back to the center. 44 seconds to go in this first period. Yeah, I'd like to see Mike figure out how to get at these legs. I think what he's got to do is sort of circle a little more and get out to the side and take a different angle in at him. He can't go straight in at him. Nope, move him around, get yep. him to circle. He got to get out, take a, come in on a different angle. Too, you're just having too hard of a time getting straight in at him. See that? Even in wrestling, we have angles. It's like geometry here. It's like yep. math class. So I got a different angle. Again, he got off balance there. I have a feeling one yep. of these times Maher's Just gonna catch him. him. Yep, Push he's him gonna over. catch him. Out of bounds, 16 seconds to go. Maher up one to nothing. Gotta be very careful. Yeah. You know, it's this is where Matt Zagarski lost it. You know, he can't give up a takedown here with 10 seconds, 12 seconds to go. Stay inside the man. Nice little shot. Yep. Heading Four down, seconds no. to go, Just lift your head. There. Don't get in any trouble. Period will come to an end. Mike Maher up one nothing. A lot of battling going on in here for a one nothing match. Absolutely, <laughs> and Oppen also will take bottom, and he'll be looking to uh, get an escape himself, at least to tie the match. Maybe a reversal to go ahead. Well, I don't know. Oh, I was going to say, I saw him at first. I thought he was going to start like that. He was sitting on both ankles. I'm thinking, oh, God, what is Mike going to grab a hold of there? He was sitting on both ankles. Just Tight waist. Yep. You don't see that too much anymore. For a while, that was yeah. the style there. You that know, sit big. back on your ankles. And well, to hide those laces yep. so guys can't grab your ankles. But it, it limits you what you can do then. Yeah, the only thing you really do is either pressure back or sit out. You were stuck. You weren't coming up. I'm an old traditionalist. Go back to the regular way and do it right. A lot of things you can do. Yeah, if Mike can break him flat, I think he might be able to turn him. One minute. 45 seconds to go in the third period here. He has the leverage on him. He's just got to be able to break him flat. Trying to work a cradle. He got it. Almost. Ooh. Almost. Got to get back around now, though. Yep. Get back in position. Look There's where you're at, again. Look where you're at. Ah. 
That's right. Okay. I, I think Mike is starting to realize something. This guy's not as strong as he thought because he's starting to take it to him here a little bit. And he had good mat sense. He yep. knew where the out of bounds was, saw he might have been in a little trouble. He got a fresh start, came back to the center. There goes my pin, Ron. Oh, got a little too high there. A little too high. Okay, Abenosa does get out, does secure the one point escape. It's one to one. Takedown wins here, more than likely. Yep, 112 left. Oh, it's right by your feet there. All right, let's see. Got to get that new pen, Ron. Yeah, you don't want to lose it yet. Compliments yep. of uh, Sergeant Jordan from the Air National Guard. Gave us nice pens here tonight. That's Hats nice. off to him. Thank you very much. Nice shot, Mike. Got to keep walking to that. Keep walking to it. 57 seconds to go, still one to one There here. it is, he got it, he got it, he got it. Almost. He's wizarding him though. Oh. Don't give it up, Mike, hold on to that leg. Jeez, uh, and right by the out of bounds. Well, he didn't. Well, He's I thought they were it. out of bounds. Did he, get, I gave him the two. I didn't really see him signal him. He had him out, but he didn't actually signal it. But that makes it three to one right now. Yeah, 30 seconds left. 30 seconds to go. Mike's 20. working hard here. He's got that cross face. He's hitting it hard. Trying to get her out uh. of that stalemate. Yeah, maybe for the best. Get a fresh start. He's got to get a takedown now at the bottom line. Yeah, but he didn't, get, he didn't give him the escape. So it's still three one. He's down. Oh boy. Yep, 3-1, three, one, three, and he's going to be down. 18 seconds to go in so this match. You're going to need an escape or a reversal. But an Boy, escape a couple and a hard. takedown for the winner, a reversal to take him in overtime. And he was in here. He had that shot here. It was beautifully. He turned it into sort of like a dump. He just couldn't cut it off. A couple, geez, if he, hopefully he uh, gets out here and scores. If not, boy, what a heartbreaker. A couple yeah, of heartbreakers by him and, and Matt Zagarski. Yeah, because they're, they're wrestling hard. That's that experience. The boys are looking a lot better. Conditioning definitely improving. Maher, 14 seconds, trying to sit out, turn in, trying to get out, coming to his feet, turns there in. Go. Looks like he's going to get one Seven here. Seven seconds. He's there he is trying. Three seconds, got to go. Nah, Doesn't yeah. look like he's going to do it. Ah. Mike Maher is going to lose a Boy, heartbreaking that's a decision. Bummer. He wrestled tough. Three to two, Tom Apinosa over Mike Maher. That will give Monte Area 12 team points and make the score 55 to 12. And we'll move into our last match run. Yep, Mount Carmel. Let's see, who do we got here? Is this Frederick? This is Jonathan Frederick. Yep, Charles there. Charles Frederick. Frederick. Mount Carmel. Okay, so for Mount Carmel, we have Charles Frederick. And for Mahano Area, we have Tom Seddon. Tom said it. He's in there on the shot. We have Charles blocking him there, picking on that ankle. Good job, Charles Frederick. Snap down, spins around, gets There should be two. two. Yep. Two to nothing early here in his last match, 145 pound match. Started this evening's festivities at 152 pounds. Yep, and Doug got us going with that pin. And Charles Frederick so trying much. Trying to control. end it with that. He's working tough in here. He has that one-on-one. -on -one. He's trying to get that half up in there, but they're too close to that out-of-bounds. We seem to be wrestling a lot by the out-of-bounds here tonight. Warning <laughs> quickly on the bottom for Stalin. Yeah, I'll say that was quick. But he isn't doing anything. He's just climbing up in there. He's just taking the elbows, jamming them into his side. He's not even trying to get out. It's okay. pretty clear, no doubt about it. Yeah, Frederick's trying to work. He got the one-on-one -on -one in there again. Trying to work him over, 54 seconds to go, first period. He's doing a nice job. Two on one, driving it in, getting them flat. And he's trying to just work that right through. He's walking it over, he has the one on one, and he walked it right over, beautiful. Very beautiful, very close to having a pin. You gotta very come on this close. side, he's pinned. He's pinned, he's right. <laughs> he's pinned, he's on the wrong side looking for 30 it. 30 seconds to go, trying to readjust Stay himself. Stay where you're at, ref. He's going to gonna get him again. He's going to get him again. Nope. He's going to get three, three back. back and going to give up a two-point reversal. And that makes it five to two right now. Frederick trying to come out the back door, gets to his feet. 
gets an escape, makes it six to two, 10 seconds to go. 145 pound match. Oh, on a nice single leg. I don't know if he's gonna have enough time to finish it. Four seconds. Just don't give anything up here. And the period will end. Charles Fredericks, Mount Carmel area, six to two over Tom Seddon of the Mona area. Frederick defers his choice. Mahoney takes neutral. But that was a shame if the official could have gotten a proper position here. We might have might have been done by now. And well, Mahoney. we got to see a little bit more wrestling. Yep, Seddon in there on a single leg. And Frederick trying to block it in there with a wizard, trying to get his hip down. Trying to separate the head. That's what you do. Good job. There you go. Nice. And, and he went and into his own shot. shot. That was good transition wrestling right there. Went from the counter right into the shot. Didn't get it, but a nice job anyway. Almost looking to get no, around. He gave it to him now. Okay, two-point takedown. Charles Frederick. Mount Carmel area, 145 pounds. Eight to two, winning over Tom Seddon. Again, we're by that out-of-bounds line. <laughs> it seems all well, the action's by the... I like it when it's in the center. Well, he's got that half in there. He just can't, he's got a, he's working it right. He's trying to butt the head down with his own head and get that half up in there. But Seddon wants nothing to do with it. Absolutely, and 58 seconds to go, second period. He's getting called again. See, all he's doing is, he's grabbing his, grabbing Frederick's hands and just clamping and, down and, and he's that, not, and not and trying to get out. And he is awarded a penalty point for that. Charles Frederick's up nine to two right now. Tom Seddon being bludgeoned here by Charles Frederick. Yeah, Fredericks is looking good. Again, here's another example of our depth on this team. Doing a great job. 30 seconds to go in the second period. Stalling again. Oh, he again. hit him again. One more point, and it's 1-1-2, one, one, and, and then he's out. You're out of here. So he only has two more stalling, you know? <clears throat> and the way Frederick's working and the way Seddon's hanging on there might not Take too long for it to happen. 10 seconds to go in this second period. Frederick's trying to walk that over again like he did last time, and he's going to get it. It looks like he's going to get some back points. One second there to go, is. and he'll get the pin with one second to go. Make that 359 into the match. Charles Fredericks wins by fall over Tom Seddon, which puts Mount Carmel into the 60-point mark. They win this match 61 to 12. We're going to be right back with a wrap-up. Again, the final score is 61 to 12. We'll be back in a moment. Back at Mount Carmel Area High School. Final score of this evening's match. Again, Mount Carmel Area all over the Golden Bears of Monte Area. 61 to 12 in Schuylkill League action. Uh, guys look good tonight, Ron. Uh, the good wrestlers came through. No, no big injuries. The guys that needed the wins got them. And, uh, just an all-around good outing for the troops. Yeah, very impressive. I, like I said, there were some of the other guys that finally got an opportunity to show what they can do, and they stepped it up. We had some aggressive matches. It was a shame we lost a couple of heartbreakers in there where the boys wrestled real tough, gave up some points by the edge with time running out, but that's all a learning experience. You know, it didn't cost the team at all. Yeah, but the boys are looking good. Looks like they're getting ready for district duels. Looks like they're getting ready for sectionals. Well, and I'm excited for the boys. Big, big uh, tournament this week. Uh, Schuylkill, Schuylkill League. League tournament. Uh, you know, uh, Schuylkill League is a, unfortunately, we're going to be getting out of the Schuylkill League into the heartland next year, but we're still in the, we're going to, I shouldn't say that, we're going to stay in the Schuylkill League in wrestling. They're allowing us to stay there, but, you know, really a, a premier league. I mean, you got teams like Halifax, you got District 3 teams, Mount Carmel being District 4, you got all the District 11 teams. This tournament, you're going to see a lot of action, a lot of kids that, you know, you'll probably see in the state tournament well, we'll be that, seeing here this That's weekend. what's nice about it. When you get to wrestle these kids in the Schuylkill League, a lot of these kids, you won't run into them again until states, which is, you know, it's nice. You get a different style of wrestling. You're not, if you run into them down at states, you're not going to be unfamiliar with them. You're going to know how to wrestle them, how to handle their style. Yeah, and that's one thing about, like I said, the Tornadoes going to the Canter Duels uh, a few weeks ago down in Biggerville. Saw some teams from District 1 down there. Uh, some teams from, again, District 3 teams that they're not going to normally see. You know, and that's good for the coaches to see the competition and to see who has what. And, you know, you're, you're always getting ready for the postseason, and you've got to be thinking about that. Yeah, always. Well, we're positioning. We've got to get some of our guys back to – health you know we got sean and Collins banged up here a little bit we got blitz is banged up here we got i know brosh is going to be able to come back at all for the season 
But other than that, the depth is really helping us out. The boys look tough and wish them luck the rest of the season. Absolutely. We'll remind everybody again tonight and send the congratulations out again to uh, James Haynes, who uh, crossed over the century mark this year. He's awarded a plaque for uh, 100 wins. Joins uh, six other, uh, five other wrestlers at Mount Carmel area to achieve that mark. Again, hats off to him. We wish him the best the rest of the season, as well as the uh, other wrestlers. But, uh, you know, Ronnie, the guys look so good tonight. And how are they awarded? They have to roll up the mats. Yeah, that's what me, me and you were commenting on that. You know, you watch these guys roll up the mats. It's like this is a wrestling fraternity. Every wrestler is familiar with this situation. you got to roll them up, put them on the cart, take them on the side, get them out of the way. And it's hard. They're heavy heavy match but this brings the team closer together if you need your carpet rolled up go look for a wrestler because they know how to roll up mats because here it is they're, they're out there rolling them up but again congratulations to them we'll say again score tonight 61 to 12 mount carmel area uh moves to 15 and 1 on the season we uh wish them the best of luck we look forward to seeing you good real soon on our next broadcast till that point for ronnie lantini this is greg sacavage saying Good night and good wrestling.